Good morning. I'm Reverend Andrew Frazier, and on behalf of the session, the congregation, and the staff, welcome to worship here at First Presbyterian Church of Ann Arbor. Whether you're a longtime member or a visitor, and no matter where you are along the journey of faith, you are welcome here. We hope that you'll take a look at your bulletin to see all the ways that we are being the church together, but I'd like to highlight a few things for you. First, please join us for a virtual coffee hour immediately following the closing voluntary. This is always a great opportunity to share fellowship with one another and maybe even meet some new people. Today, we will be celebrating Cindy King, our former administrative assistant, who left on January 15th to explore an exciting new opportunity. So we hope you'll come and thank Cindy for all that she's done for First Pres. Now, calling all volunteers, the Rotating Shelter needs your help for the week of February 22nd through the 28th. First Pres has partnered with Calvary UMC to provide volunteers as they host the Rotating Shelter in their building. If you're interested, please register at the link that's found in your bulletin. Now, if you're carrying a burden and are in need of prayer, the prayer team meets on Monday mornings now via Zoom from 9 to 9.30 with Reverend Rogers. The Zoom link is found in your bulletin and on the church calendar. We hope you'll join us there so we can pray for you. Now, Lent is fast approaching, and there are two options for worship on Ash Wednesday, the very beginning of Lent. First, you can join us at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom for an interactive Ash Wednesday service. An interactive pack that includes ashes, a spiritual practices journal, and a prayer in color page will be available by prior registration for pickup on Monday and Tuesday, February 15th and 16th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. and from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. If you're unable to pick up during these times, a pack can be delivered to you. Then at 7.30, we're having an ecumenical Teze worship service that will be available on our Facebook and YouTube pages, but you'll also have the opportunity to join us and watch the service live on Zoom and interact with members from the participating congregations. We hope you'll join us for one or both of these special services. Finally, I have two pastoral notes to share with you. We celebrate the life and grieve the death of Libby Langford, who died last Sunday at her home in Barton Hills. And we also celebrate the life and grieve the death of Jan Stevens, who died last Friday at the side of her husband, Bob Donofrio. Blessed are those who die in the Lord, for they will rest from their labors. Now, let us turn our thoughts and our hearts most fully to God and prepare ourselves for worship.
join me in the call to worship. How good it is to sing praises to our God. For the Lord is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. Our God heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked into the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make a melody to our God. For the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope his steadfast love. Praise the Lord. May the Lord's name be praised. Before we call, God answers us. While we are speaking, God hears us. With humble hearts, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Gracious Lord, too often we fail to proclaim the gospel. We negate our duty to love one another and show the love of God to all. We have no ground for boasting for we trust in our own will and look for our own reward. We cannot fake it hard enough to please everyone or anyone at all. We separate ourselves from those not like us and so we separate us from you, the one who calls all humanity into one love. We are afraid to become weak or to reach out to those barely scraping by. We are too quick to give up rather than give back. Forgive us, O Lord. You have entrusted us with the gospel. Strengthen us to go to those places we fear the most. In your life and love, we pray.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Friends, hear this good news that Jesus Christ has done so much for us, so many great things he's taken on for us. Thanks be to God that we are forgiven in him. And now as God's people, forgiven and restored, let us share the peace of Christ with those around us. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may hear your word with joy. Amen. And now a reading from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 21 and 26 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? The Lord who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name. Because God is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. God does not faint or grow weary. The Holy One's understanding is unsearchable. The Lord gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, Jay. It's great to be here together today. And we welcome all of the children and the adults that are listening and invite them to come a little bit closer and join because we have a, a special book that I'm sure pretty much almost everybody would know. I know every time we show it to an adult, they're like, oh yeah, I remember that book. Yeah, it's really good to be together today. We haven't gotten to do this in a long time and it's great to see you. So I have a question for you. Becca, have you ever had a really, really bad, horrible day just absolutely a day when nothing goes right. Have, have you ever had one of those days? I have. In fact, I've had a couple of those days in my time. You have. Mm. Well, your day then sounds like the story of one of my favorite books. It's uh, Judith Worst's Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. Do you know that story? It's a great little book. I do. I know a little bit about it, um, but I don't have it at home. So tell me a little bit more. Well, it's the story of a little boy named Alexander, and it's the story of one day in his life. It's about his mom and his dad and his two brothers. And it's the story of his terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. It starts really badly first thing in the morning when he wakes up and he has gum in his hair. Mm. And then he trips over his skateboard and falls into the sink in the bathroom. And then at breakfast, his brother Anthony gets a Corvette Stingray car in his cereal, and his other brother Nick gets uh, an undercover agent ring in his cereal. And Alexander gets, well, in his cereal, he gets cereal. And that's all. And Alexander thinks that he'll just give up because the day's just going so badly that he's just going to move to Australia. I do remember that book. And Alexander's teacher likes somebody else's picture better yep, than his. That's right. And then he's told that he's singing too loudly, which right. I was told that in choir too. Okay. Um, and he forgets numbers and math, which, you know, I've, I've had those days. And, and everything looks like a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. 
for Alexander. And I've had those days. And I, I bet you've had those days too, Jay. I've had one or two in my life. You're yeah. right. And, you know, I bet some of the children have had those days. And, you know, I've seen sometimes my son has those days too. Really? Yep. On occasion, you just, the Sebastian whole day. Sebastian has that kind of day. He does. Well, I'm sorry. You know, there are days when we trip and fall in the snow. There are days when your brothers get cool sneakers with colors and you get just plain white kids. Mm. There are days like that. They're boring days. They're days when things go really badly. Yeah, and you know, I really like the passage from Isaiah that Jack just read for us. It really speaks to me when I'm having a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. Well, isn't it cool that God's scripture from Isaiah could speak to you? When you're having a bad day, that's just amazing, isn't it? Yeah. And if you listen carefully, Isaiah gives us a picture of what God does when we're having those, those terrible, horrible, no good, very that's bad great. days. And here is a God who doesn't get tired or frustrated or worried or quit when things don't go well. Hey, we can use that kind of God, I think. Right. So I think that Jack's given us, Isaiah's given us... Uh, a picture of God, the God who created the earth and everything in it, the God who created and loves us, the God who lives forever and never gives up on us. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of God we can use when we're having a terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day. It's about a God who comes alongside us and kind of lifts us up and holds us up in God's arms and won't let go of us and will try to not let us fall. I think that's the kind of God that we need and that's the kind of picture of that Isaiah gives us. Isn't that not cool? That's super cool. And that's definitely the kind of God that I trust in and, and that I believe in. And so it's a kind of God that understands us, that he understands me and he understands you and probably all the kids which is, and, and all the adults and parents as well. And this God understands everything and accepts everyone, all of the people. That's a great story, isn't it? Yeah. So, Jay, thanks for bringing that book and sharing it. I love it. it. Well, it's thanks for book. talking about it with me. We love it. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So, will you pray with me? I will. Okay. Caring God. Caring God. You know our good days. You know our good days. And our terrible, horrible, no good, very bad days. And you know our terrible, horrible, no good, very bad days. We are grateful that you are there for us each time. We're so grateful you're there for us each time. And we know we can trust you to love us either way. And we know that we can trust you to love us either way. We are so thankful to have you there. We're so thankful to have you there. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Becca. Thank you. It's a great story. It is. We'll have to read it at home. Our second scripture reading today comes from the gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. Listen for the word of God. As soon as they had left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever also left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick, or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place and there he prayed, and Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they finally found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go. 
Let us go on to the neighboring town, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The grass withers, the flower fades, the word of the Lord endures forever. As some of you may or may not know, I've had many book ideas over the years, from a screenplay about the Apostle Paul and his travels, to a memoir of my grandfather, to a book on the theology of Lost, only the best television show ever. I've had many book ideas, but if I were to write a memoir of my life, yes, another book, I already have a title in mind, In Search of Gospel. That is, In Search of Good News. As I look back on my life growing up in church as a PK, that's pastor's kid for those who don't know, I often wondered where is the good news amongst all these old folk and hard pews. Then when I went off to college in North Carolina, to Davidson College, the only Presbyterian college that my mom insisted I look at, I had to look at one, I asked where is the good news here amidst these stately columns, this southern heat and this academic rigor. Later I went to Kenya and volunteered with the PCUSA Young Adult Volunteer Program There I searched for the good news amidst devastating poverty and extreme need. Later I would go to grad school in California at SFTS, at San Francisco Theological Seminary, and later here I would come to Michigan to be a resident minister as I explored what did it look like to share the good news as a pastor. As I went to Kauai after being here to teach middle school in math and social studies, I sought to model the good news, the gospel, to my students. And now having returned to Michigan, working with college students in this congregation and faith formation, I'm always searching for the good news, for the gospel, wherever it might be found. So what is the good news? What is good news to you? What is the good news that you would like to hear? Just tell me when I can get my vaccine. Just tell me when I can go to the movies again. Tell me when we can hug each other again or just see face to face. Tell me some good news. What is the good news that you hope to hear? The religious word we use for good news is gospel, coming from the old English, God's spiel, God's spiel. It comes from the Greek, eugelion, you for good, and geli is angel or messenger. So an in the word is a message, a messenger, good news that's coming from a messenger. And who is this messenger? In the ancient world, it often came from the ruler, whoever was in charge. In Jesus' time, it was Caesar. And a messenger would come and issue a proclamation, like, we've won a great battle, or I've defeated my political opponent, or it's my birthday, so let's celebrate. That's good news, right? Well, what's good news for the emperor is not necessarily good news for the people. If it's truly to be good news, to be God's news, it's got to be good for everyone. Good news for all. But in this day and age, is good news for everyone even possible? When news can be twisted or used against one party or another, declared real or fake, when information is power, and manipulation the manner to move ahead in the marketplace when one's truth is another's conspiracy and vice versa? How can any news be good news for all? 
the question quickly becomes, the gospel according to who? One thing is certain. We are not going to believe any good news, no matter where it comes from, unless we trust the person speaking it. Isn't that true? That we believe something to be true is based on the source. This is what I taught my students, particularly in social studies. Check your sources. You might believe me because I am your teacher, or I am your pastor, or I am your friend, but you also must trust me if you're going to listen to what I say. As such, truth is based on trust. When we no longer trust the news media, we're not going to believe anything that they may say, good or bad. When we no longer trust the other side, we won't believe what they might have to share with us. If we are ever to have truth again, to have a common understanding, if we are ever to believe in something together, we must learn to trust one another. The good news depends on who is saying it. So what is this gospel? This gospel of Jesus Christ, this one who came into the world, who fully sacrificed and gave himself over so that all might live lives full of grace and truth and love? It's the same question we ask. Do you trust in Christ when you become a member of this church or you're going out to serve on our behalf? Do you trust this messenger of the good news? Okay, but what does it mean? That's the question I was hunting. From Kenya to Kauai, from the Carolinas to California, this is the question I asked. What is the good news that Jesus is saying? What has he come to tell us? How is the story of Jesus' good news for me and my life? I believe this is the question that's asked not just in our lives, but is being asked throughout the Bible. The question of the good news, particularly in our passage in Isaiah today, comes from a time when people are in exile, when people are strangers in a strange land, when they are seeking some type of good news that they'll be restored back to Israel, for they have been exiled to Babylon. When we say good news, we're saying you belong, that there is a homecoming, that peace is coming. How would you define the gospel in your own life? What is the good news that you yearn for? Is it unity amongst political strife, whether it's in your family or in our legislature? Perhaps you're waiting for good news from a diagnosis, either for yourself for a friend or family member. Perhaps you're overwhelmed and just looking for something, someone to save you. Perhaps you need help but are too afraid to ask. Perhaps you don't trust anyone to give you any good news. Yet we are all looking for salvation. We are looking to be saved from financial ruin, from depression, saved from ourselves, saved from violence and destruction, saved even from death. And in Christ, Christ has this good news, this good news that permeates the Bible. And yet, how is it relevant today? As we look in this passage in Isaiah, and as we heard today in the children's message, Knowing that God has created the world means that God has a purpose for all of us. That things aren't existing haphazardly or exist out of accident, but that even when the Israelites are away in Babylon, that God is there with them and not just in Israel. And that God has the power to save them. God has the power to lift up the faint, to strengthen the powerless. While young people may faint and grow weary, while others will grow exhausted, the Lord has the strength to lift everyone up like the wings of an eagle, and they shall not grow weary, and they shall not go faint. We hear the power of the gospel in this passage, and in Mark, we see that there is a person in this gospel as well. 
the messenger, that Jesus Christ is the good news, the gift to be received, the invitation to new life. And as we look at the passage today, I wonder what good news we might hear. The passage begins as soon as they left the synagogue. It's on Sunday, where there's not supposed to be any healing, supposed to go home and rest. And what do we find but a sick mother-in-law? And as a son-in-law, I know you want to do everything you can to help her. And Jesus comes, lifts her up, and the fever is gone. Now that was probably in the afternoon sometime. And in the evening, the entire village comes to the house. It's like word got out. And people who were sick were healed. People with demons got cast out. They were set free. And then we fast forward to the morning. Jesus seems to need a a respite, take some time. And so his disciples go hunting for him, going for a purpose. And when they find him, they say, everyone is searching for you. They want to hear more of this good news. They want the sickness to be healed. They want these demons cast out. And what does he say? Let us go. Let us go on to the neighboring town so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. Jesus is on the move. The one who casts out demons and heals the sick, who gets rid of evil and welcomes in the good, who unburdens us from our mental and physical illness, who restores us to full health, does not do it for our own sake, but does it for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of sharing the good news for everyone and everywhere. This message that he brings is often encapsulated with the kingdom of God is near. In other words, at least my interpretation, love is all around us. When we come to the table today, we are reminded that we too are sick with sin, that our souls are searching, searching for the one, for the spirit that might heal us. The good news is that the love of God is here at this table and yet also all around. To use the words of the musician Dave Matthews, Jesus says, eat this bread, think of it as me, drink this wine, and dream it to be. Today we eat, and today we dream. Today we wake the dreams into reality as receiving this message of love, this good news, so that we might become messengers of love. Christ has come and Christ will come again. Love has come and love will come again. This is the good news that comes to us and a carpenter from Nazareth. That by his example, we would be empowered by his spirit to spread the good news long after we have left this table, long after Jesus has left town, long after any one of us has perished. This Sunday is the first Sunday of February. We not only celebrate communion, but we also celebrate Black History Month. And we are reminded that in the Civil Rights Movement, the people who participated in that uplifted not just people of color, but all people everywhere, so that everyone would be treated with dignity and respect. Today, that's what we mean by Black Lives Matter, that all lives matter in a way, but these in particular need to be uplifted so that all lives matter and are done with dignity and respect. Martin Luther King had a dream. His dream lives long after his death. We follow in his footsteps to wake these dreams into reality that we might enact policies and treat one another with kindness and decency where we can stand up for justice and mercy, where we can stand up for truth and reconciliation. Yes, we come to this table, 
as we come to Christ for healing. We are about to sing a song with these very words and know that the good news we seek is not only just for us, just for our clan, for our people, but it is truly for all, for all of us. So may you find this good news wherever you are, and may you share it in word and in deed wherever you go. Hallelujah. Amen. Friends, a warm welcome again as we gather in the spirit of gladness and grace with our hopes that you will visit the virtual friendship pad at this time and leave your information, prayer requests, and comments, and an invitation to join the coffee hour again at 10.30 to celebrate our colleague Cindy King as she completes her work with us. We have come to that time when we give of what we have been given In Romans, we find these words of Paul. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best you can do for God. Consider how you might give your offering this morning at the website or by text to give or by sending in a check But then, let us consider at a deeper level, in this time, how we give the whole of our lives as an offering to God. Let us pray. As you received the tears of Mary Magdalene, the hospitality of Zacchaeus, and small coins from the widow, accept our earthly gifts and make them holy. Make us worthy to be your servants. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Friends, this is the Lord's table. This is the great feast of the people of God. It is not a Presbyterian table. It is not an Ann Arbor table. This table belongs to the Lord, who reigns over us and over this table in glory. It is Jesus who invites us to come as we are with our burdens, our fears, our hopes, and our joys to receive the nourishment of Christ that he offers. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. 
From the beginning, all that you have done has been born out of love for your people, and we are compelled to respond back to you in love. And yet sometimes we fail, sometimes we fall short. We are human and limited, and yet in spite of that, you have always been faithful with your steadfast love. Thank you for loving us so much that you became the very good news in the flesh of Jesus the Christ. He came with healing in his touch and was wounded for our sins. He came with mercy in his voice, yet was mocked as one despised. He came with peace in his heart, yet was met with violence and death. By your power he broke free from the prison of the tomb, and we now trust in the one who was dead and now lives. He is with us always, as promised. So with the faithful of every time and place, we now lift our hearts in joyful praise, singing. Loving God, you sent us Jesus to preach the gospel, to mend that which is broken, to bridge that which is alienated, and to heal that which is diseased. Send your spirit now to our troubled hearts as we pray for those whose needs are great and whose comforts are few, and show us the tangible ways we can serve them. For those in transition waiting for direction and wisdom, for care in the midst of impatience, for the unemployed, for those facing divorce and those steadfast in caregiving roles that exhaust them. For them, your spirit guides, grant them patience, embrace all pain, reveal the promise of new life to those who most need to see it. For the broken, the conflicted, the confused, come and shed your light and your truth for all those in need of good news, O oh God. We lift up our praise as well. You are the hope of those whose needs remain unfulfilled. In uncertainty and fear about this world, you lead us into hope for better times. In times of death, your resurrection is the sign, your life the doorway to our new life. We pray for unity in our nation as our hope grows for good news, for worldwide peace and stability, for the world's peoples to have their basic needs met, their opportunities for abundant life and faith open to them. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast. And as this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out as the body of Christ for the world, sharing the good news wherever we go, now and forever, as we pray the prayer that you gave us the words to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It was on the night that he gathered with friends in a home once more. It was on the night when he would be betrayed, when all seemed lost, that he took this bread and gave thanks. And after breaking it, 
said, this is my body broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. My blood poured out for you and for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink it, he said, and do it in remembrance of me. Every time we take this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our Lord until he comes again. Friends, look. Look and see Christ coming to us in this bread and in this cup. This, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us keep the feast. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, as we have proclaimed your death by eating this bread and drinking this cup, help us to wait for you, to wish for you, to watch for you, so that as you come again, you will find us ready to share your good news for all. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, as we go forth from this place, having been filled with bread and the cup, know that it is not for ourselves, but is so that we might serve and share the good news, sharing it with words and in deed, doing it in ways that show a love for all people in all places, 
lifting up the downtrodden, healing the sick, and giving good news to the poor. Go now, trusting in the Creator God, in the Redeeming Son, and in the Sustaining Spirit, now and forever. Amen.